a new Google chip that might be pulling power from other universes, particles that could be entangled across different realities, and an entire stack of hidden Earths floating just millimeters away, divided by a dimension we can't see. This is more disturbing evidence alternate versions of Earth exist. Last year, Google pulled off something wild with their new quantum chip called Willow. This chip solved a problem in five minutes that would take the supercomputers we have today about 10 septillion years to finish. Hartmut Nevin, the head of Google's quantum AI team, called the result astonishing and said it, quote, lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes. So basically the idea is that the chip's crazy speed might be explained if calculations are happening across different versions of reality all at the same time. This ties into the many worlds interpretation proposed by physicist David Deutsch, which says that every possible outcome happens somewhere in a multiverse. So in theory, Willow might be tapping into those alternate universes when it solves problems. Unlike regular computers that use zeros and ones, Willow uses qubits, which can hold multiple states at once letting it handle insanely complex calculations at lightning speed. Imagine you have two specialized coins and you flip them at the exact same time, sending one to New York and keeping the other in London. The moment you look at the coin in London though and see it landed on heads, you instantly know the coin in New York is tails, even though no signal or message had time to travel between them. They are entangled. They share a connection that scientists call a shared state. We've talked about this many times before on the channel, but now let's take this to a much bigger scale. Some physicists wonder if this connection could happen not just across space, but across different realities. Maybe the atoms that make up our Earth are somehow entangled with the atoms of a parallel Earth. See, there are mysteries as to how particles behave sometimes. Now, what if when a tiny particle on our Earth does something unpredictable, well, it might not be random. It could be because it's instantly affecting or being affected by its entangled twin particle in a parallel reality. The unpredictable random little movements we see in the smallest particles of our world could actually be the sign of a constant cause and effect relationship with a parallel Earth. String theory is what physicists come up with when they try to find the ultimate theory of everything. They wanted one single set of math that could explain both the super big stuff, like planets and stars, and the super tiny stuff, like atoms. But they ran into a problem. The math for this theory kept falling apart unless they added a ton of extra dimensions. First, let's nail down what we mean by dimensions. We live in a 4D world, three dimensions of space to locate anything, left, right, up, down, forward, and backward, and one dimension of time to say when an event happened. That's four dimensions we experience. For string theory's equations to work perfectly and make sense, they needed far more than four though. They needed 10 or 11 dimensions in total. Why? Well, it all comes down to gravity. When scientists try to describe gravity on these smallest scales, like inside atoms, things get confusing. They calculate that the force of gravity packed into a single tiny point should be endless. Since we don't see endless forces in the real universe, the math just breaks down. String theory fixes that by saying everything is made of tiny, vibrating little strings that make up everything in the universe. Imagine everything in the universe, your chair, the air, you, well, it's made up of tiny, tiny rubber bands. These rubber bands are so small, you can't see them, and they're wiggling and vibrating, kind of like when you pluck a guitar string. How each rubber band wiggles decides what it actually is. One way it wiggles makes it an electron, another way makes it a quark, another way makes it a photon, so on and so on. If the rubber band didn't wiggle, it wouldn't turn into anything. It would just be a useless string. The vibration is what gives particles their identity, so to speak. Different vibrations equals different types of particles. That's why string theory calls it strings, like tiny strings that make everything, but only because they wiggle in that right way. Now, for them to wiggle correctly without breaking the math, they need more space than we can see. That's where the hidden dimensions come in, extra directions for the strings to move so all the particles and forces Makes sense. Next up, we have false vacuum decay, a pretty scary idea. This one is less about how a parallel Earth exists and more about how one could replace ours. So say you had a ball sitting in a slight dip on a large table. Right now, the ball 
looks stable and everything seems fine, but it's not in the lowest, safest spot it could actually be. That's what scientists call a false vacuum. Somewhere else on the table is a deeper, bigger hole, the true vacuum. If the ball somehow gets nudged over the edge of its little dip, it will roll into the deeper hole. Some scientists think our universe might be like that little dip. Here, atoms are stable, life exists, everything is the way it is right now, but it's technically not the most stable state possible. In quantum physics, tiny random fluctuations happen all the time. Usually they don't do anything noticeable, but in theory, one could just be enough to push the universe from the false vacuum into the true vacuum. That wouldn't be good for us. If that happens, it would create a bubble where the rules of physics are completely different. That bubble would expand at nearly the speed of light, instantly changing everything inside. Atoms could fall apart, matter could dissolve, and our universe as we know it, Earth included of course, would be wiped out and replaced by a completely new reality. Imagine math isn't just a tool we use to describe the universe, but the math is the universe. That's the core idea proposed by physicist Max Tegmark. Think about how many video games uh, can be designed. You can design one where gravity is so strong, one where it's weak, one where the characters can fly, one where they can't, yada yada. Every single game is based on a different set of mathematical rules. Tegmark suggests that every single possible set of consistent mathematical rules doesn't just describe a universe, it is a universe, and that all of these unique equations make up their own alternate universes. Our Earth, the one we live on, is an example of one of these mathematical structures. It's a universe where, by, where gravity follows a specific formula, light travels at a specific speed, but there could be an infinite number of other Earths and universes with different mathematical rules that are just as real. Now let's talk quantum immortality. Remember the many worlds interpretation, the idea that every time a decision is made, the universe splits into different possibilities? Now let's apply that to your life. Imagine you are in a situation with a 50-50 chance of survival, like a very dangerous surgery. The moment the choice is made by the universe, essentially, you live or you die, the universe splits into two. One timeline where you survive, wake up, and one where you didn't make it. The concept of quantum immortality suggests, though, that the version of you that is conscious will always find itself in the timeline where you survived. You can never experience your own death because the act of observing yourself dying pushes your consciousness into the branch of reality where you lived. So in a sense, you survive every single fatal accident, every close call, every life-threatening disease, forever jumping from one parallel Earth to the next, always finding the reality where you lived to see the next moment. A pretty comforting thought, and I am not responsible for any reckless risks you decide to take with this information in mind. Please don't do that. When astronomers look at super distant galaxies, they notice something weird about their light. It's redshifted. What does that mean? Well, when a light wave leaves a distant galaxy, it's like a tightly coiled spring. As that light travels toward us across billions of light years, its waves get stretched out. And when light waves are stretched, they shift toward the red end of the color spectrum. That's redshift. The standard accepted explanation for this is that the entire universe is expanding. As the light travels, the empty space is moving through gets stretched out, which in turn stretches the light waves and makes them appear red. But way back, there was a competing idea called tired light. The idea here was that the universe wasn't expanding. Instead, the light was just losing energy on its long journey. Here's why losing energy makes it look red. Light color is directly tied to its energy. Red light has less energy than blue light. If light starts its journey as energetic blue light and then slowly loses energy over long distances, it would eventually look like lower energy red light when it finally gets to us, almost like it's getting tired, for lack of a better word. But here's where an alternate universe comes in. What if the light isn't tired from age, but it's actually being drained of its energy by something we can't see? Some think that our visible universe is constantly surrounded by a sea of what's called mirror matter, the same stuff that would make up a mirror Earth. This matter doesn't interact with our light or our forces directly, but it could be affecting light as it passes through it, draining its energy. This energy drain would make the light appear redshifted or tired. When you're watching leaves floating on a pond, 
there's no wind, the leaves will still drift in different directions by themselves. That's what scientists expected galaxies to do, move around sort of randomly because of stuff nearby pulling on them. Imagine hundreds of those leaves suddenly all start sliding the same way toward the same shore as if something is pulling on them only there's no current or wind causing it. Astronomers have seen this with giant groups of galaxies. Instead of drifting every which way, lots of them were all moving together in one direction. So what's going on? Well, some scientists think that way beyond the edge of the part of the universe we can see is pulling maybe the edge of another universe. And finally, we have the recursive universe, the idea that the universe and all its parallel Earths is an infinitely repeating pattern. We know that when a very large star dies, its gravity is so intense that it collapses into a black hole. A black hole is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, even light, can escape. The recursive universe theory suggests that the matter that collapses into a black hole might not be destroyed. Instead, the physics inside the black hole cause it to re-expand and become a new self-contained universe. Think of it almost like a Russian nesting doll. Our entire universe with all its galaxies and planets and our Earth might have been born from a black hole that exists in a parent universe that we can't see. And if that's true, then our universe may also be constantly creating new universes inside the black holes it forms. Inside the black hole, the center of our Milky Way galaxy an infant universe could be forming right now, completely cut off and unaware of its parent, our universe. Well, that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, next time. <laughs>